Uh, so the one shall we start yes sir okay so good afternoon all i am dr pradeep avade associate professor university research department mh nashik today we are here for guest lecture series uh, under the memory of dr dolodra a uh, memorial lecture series today we have dr swarada karanivar Swarada Madam is having MSc in Organic Chemistry. She has done PhD in Computational Chemistry. She is having vast experience of uh, working in uh, working as CEO of uh, DY Patel University Foundation for Innovation, Incubation, and Entrepreneurship. Recently, MSc has established. Disha uh, as an incubator center, and it is a coincidence that the next day we are going to conduct this session. This session is being streamed live on YouTube, and it is being uh, link has been shared to all our accredited colleges and all teaching departments. Uh, with this uh, small introduction, I will request Madam uh, to uh, start on. Uh, uh, the topic journey of innovation through design thinking over to you madam thank you very much sir and thank you very much for my introduction uh, a very good afternoon and warm greetings to honorable vice chancellor lieutenant general madhuri kanetkar madam respected pro vice chancellor professor dr milin nikum sir respected registrar dr rajendra bangal sir respected dean of academics dr munal patil madam and respected Dr. Jayant N. Kolaskar, sir, professor in HOD University Research Department, and all my dear participants. It is an honor for me to be here on this platform, and I would like to thank MUHS team for giving me this opportunity to interact with you all. So to begin with, I would like to mention a few things that in recent years, there is a major shift or major uh, shift in focus from research and publications towards the innovation. And this shift has happened because the innovations or business uh, economy of the country is driving by the innovation. And that is the reason innovation is so important and it should get inculcated in the academic culture. And today's session is particularly organized you to introduce you to the innovation, how you can get into the field of innovation. So, to begin with, without, uh, you know, investing too much time in explaining the importance of innovation, let me first walk you through the flow of today's session. So, journey of innovation start from ideation. And there are four simple ways to ideation that we will explain in, in the beginning session. Then there are very few important things that you should remember in ideation process. I'll explain all these things to you. Then we will understand the process or a method of design thinking model, which is a process developed by the Stanford University so that you can implement this model in your innovation process and then you will end up or land up with a good number of patents, design, and copyrights. And then I'll give you a few examples, which are non-medical also and medical also, so that you will understand the scope of innovation. So an average individual brain processes around 70,000 thoughts each day. And these thoughts may be, you know, this thought can be a constructive, creative, and it can be also a destructive thoughts. And it can be also a very random hypothetical thoughts. For example, I want to be a millionaire one day. This is just a hypothetical thought. But I can drive these thoughts towards the creativity, saying that, and saying that, that, one minute. I want to develop a product to solve the problem which will make me a millionaire one day. 
So my focus is to solve the problem. So now we will channelize our energy of thoughts towards the creating something good that will solve the problem. So in the journey of ideation, it is often said that when it comes to ideation, IQ often wins over an IQ. How it is? Let's understand that. So there are four simple ways to ideation. First thing that everyone should understand that ideation means solving a problem that is around you. Okay. And that problem can be an everyday problem. For example, when you get up in the morning, you may face some problems till the time you go to bed. There are n number of problems that you face. And if you look at that problem towards, you know, by addressing that problem, you can start the journey of your innovation, ideation. And for that purpose, to start this process, you have to inculcate in yourself three things. First thing is listen carefully. In the sense, whatever happening around you, you should be able to care, you know, listen carefully to the, your uh, people around you. For example, if you're a doctor, you should listen to your patients very carefully to understand their problems. Then look around. See, observation is the thing that you should be very keen on it. Because observation many times leads to identify the problem. So listen carefully, look around, and then write down your ideas. Because if you don't write down your ideas, it may fly away. So it is very important for a simple ideation process to inculcate these three things in your process. First thing, listen carefully. Then look around. And when you address a problem and an idea comes to your mind, have a notebook and a pen with you to immediately write down your problems. Many times it happens that when you do not write down a solution, when it hits to your mind, and after a few days, you do not even remember or recollect what was your thought that time when you address the problem. So these are the few steps for a simple ideation process that everyone should follow. Then there are you know, important things to remember in ideation. See, in today's era, the ideation is solving a real world problem using technology. And this technology driven solution will lead to the development of the country, progress of the country, and the profit to the individual and at the end to the country. So this can be a game changer if you identify a real problem which is there in the market and come up with a solution so that the idea that you solve or the product that you bring in the market will eventually give prosperity to yourself also and the, it will, at the end, help the economic growth of your country. Okay, so this is the first step. Then you should be able to understand between the difference between the desire and a need when you start the journey of innovation. For example, if I'm traveling or commuting from my uh, home to office, maybe a 15 to 20 kilometers every day on a two-wheeler, but then I'm facing a lot of problem during rainy season. So I decided last year to have my own car so that I'll be having a safe journey during rainy season. So that was my need. But then after two years, I ended up buying another car. And then in the market, I have seen Mahindra has launched Thar, which is so attractive and that tempting me to buy that car. But, but that is not my need. That is my desire. So you should be able to differentiate between what is the desire and need. And when you start the journey of innovation, you should be tapping on a need, not the desire. That is the most important thing. When you start your journey of innovation, you should be tapping on a need, not the desire. Then third thing is, Ideas that provide solution to need to fulfill the needs. So you are top, tapping on a need and you should always think that whether there is a market for my product or the innovation that I made, whether there are buyers in the market and what value I'm creating for my customers. 
many times it happens that innovator feel that their ideas are so innovative that they it will when it, it will hit it, when it will hit the market they will make good amount of money and their business will run in a big way but that is not the you know situation you should first understand that the product that i'm you know developed whether there is a need for that product if that particular product cost 500 rupees whether the buyer will invest his 500 rupees on my product or not so this is these are all very important things when you start your journey of innovation and identify a problem and come up with a solution for it you should also be thinking whether it will create a market for that particular product or not what value i'll be generating for my customer and whether my customer will invest his money in my product so these are the very important thing in the ideation process see if you look carefully innovation can leads to the prosperity if you identify a right problem it can be an asset for you <clears throat> but then in today's because as i mentioned we, there is a shift from uh, research and publication towards the innovation what should be the motivation for an individual particularly in the academic sector i have seen that uh, faculty members they are very much you know uh, in the comfort of you know doing a research and public publication so to sh shift them from a uh, typical research towards innovation what should be their motivation scientifically it is proved that for an individual the motivation first come through a recognition and a pain so if i'm developing some device which is addressing a real problem in the market i will definitely get a recognition and a pain for inventing that particular product or a device then secondary is a monetary benefits so if i am earning good amount of money from that my product that is my secondary motivation and then promotion in the sense if you are there in the job and if we have a good number of patents copyright and design application on your name you will eventually get promotion in your job and at the end definitely you grow and your institution will also grow because academic institution also needs good number of patents design and copyright application uh, copyrights for accreditation purpose so it's a win win situation for an individual and for the institution also so that can be a motivation for shifting from research typical research towards the innovation so before jumping into the design thinking process as i mentioned earlier this is the model developed by the stanford university and this is a very standardized innovation process to develop creative solutions to problems basically this process tells you that you should first identify what your customer is expecting from your product understand your customer end user what is their requirement and based on that you design your product so that is what the uh, design thinking process is when design thinking process initially introduced by the stanford university in us yes, wo zoom meeting zoom join karne bola tha teen mein koi ab bhi just kiya hai uh, i request the disturbance sir please please don't keep in on mute mode aishwarya kamath yes so when they introduce this model in us many industries in us particularly multinational companies use this model to develop their product and they have drastically seen the uh, shift from their revenue from earlier one to the after you know understanding the requirement of their customer they develop the product and when they launch that product they have seen a, a drastic increase in their revenue so uh, when they started uh, implementing this model in the industries it becomes so famous uh, that all other uh, countries has started implementing this model design uh, thinking model of innovation that is developed by stanford university uh, nowadays is a is a common practice in uh, 
Don't put it. Companies, academic institutions. So Number let's eight. understand. There are five steps, major okay. steps in design thinking yeah. process. What we will do, we'll take a quick overview okay. and then we will go in the part of no. each of these steps to understand how it can no. be implemented. So, first stage is empathy. Empathy means learning from the customer for whom you are designing. Then next is, is define. Redefining and focusing your question based on your insights from the empathy stage. Then third step is ideate. That is brainstorming and coming up with a creative solution. Fourth step is prototyping. Building a representation of one or more of your ideas to show to others. And last stage is test. When any product you have developed, you should give to your end user to try it, test it and give the feedback. So these are the five major steps involved in the design thinking process. So let's take an uh, in-depth understanding of each of the steps so that you can understand this process very well and start implementing in your innovation journey. Empathize. Empathize is also called as getting into the somebody's shoes. That means understanding your customer very well, knowing from your end user what they really want from you, what problems they do they face, and then based on that, you design your product. So how can, how can you start this journey? So first thing is to talk to customer or people for whom you are finding a solution. And by doing, uh, you can also do this by conducting a survey. Suppose I'll share you my recent example. Uh, one person approached me stating that he has some uh, formulation for uh, Ayurvedic toothpaste. And he wants to file a patent for it and he wants to bring that product in the market. I asked a few questions to him. For example, I say, I asked him, so why do you want to come up with the Ayurvedic toothpaste? Because there are n number of uh, products already available in the market. For example, Himalaya, Patanjali, they already have their toothpaste, uh, Ayurvedic toothpaste in the market. What value will be bringing to the customer who are already using these products? So I suggested him to take at least a survey of 50 to 100 people. First thing you ask them, which type of toothpaste do they use? Whether they use a normal Colgate or Pepsodent type of toothpaste or they use a Ayurvedic toothpaste, maybe the Himalaya or Patanjali. Then if they are using this particular toothpaste, Ayurvedic toothpaste, what are the benefits they are getting from it? Whether they are satisfied with it and what else they are expecting from that product. So once you understand that their expectations are something different that you can tap and then your innovation may be more fruitful when you understand their need. So instead of uh, coming up with some random formulation, if you see what they are expecting, whether their mouth is fresh the whole day or not. So that can be anything. See, every uh, person's feedback can be different. So when I suggested these things to him, he, he agreed and he did that survey. And the result is really awesome. So uh, that's the thing. You should understand your customer first. You should not coming up with something which is uh, random. If I'm planning to bring some product in the market, what are the existing products are there in the market? What problems people are facing with that problem? What are their expectations from that particular product? And if you could able to meet their expectation with your new innovation, I think you will successfully start your journey from innovation to entrepreneurship. So empathize is a very important step to understand your customer, to understand your end user. In health sciences, I'll say, to understand your patients because you will be dealing with your patients every day. You should understand your patient, what they are going through, what are their expectations from the um, healthcare domain and how you can address their problems and solve that problems. So empathize, getting into the somebody issues is very important stage where you get a deeper understanding of your users.
then define stage so when you conduct a survey i always suggest people to write down their answers and create a spreadsheet and suppose you have done a survey of 100 people then you just check for the repetitions what problems everybody is facing out of 100 even 20 people says that they face this type of problem then I, I'll tell you that is real problem that you are addressing. So defining your problem is very important. It is always said that <clears throat> it is always said that a problem well stated is, is half solved. When you know the problem, finding a solution for that particular problem becomes very easy. So, after coming out from the empathy stage, you define your problem, what your real problem is. And then you actually start your journey of ideation. So, you have a concrete problem in your hand and you want to ideate or find out the solution for that particular problem. How you can do that? Many times I suggest uh, institutions, when you have some problem statements in your hand, conduct a hackathon. So that for one single problem, you will be getting up n number of solutions from your students, faculty members. And then once you receive the solutions for that particular problem, you just need to filter it out based on how it is going to work out, whether the solution is implementable or not, whether it is practically uh, feasible or not, based on different criteria, so you can filter that out. And if suppose there are 100 students and 100 students have submitted an idea for one problem. So you just be filtering out, filtering out, and maybe you will land up with two solutions or three solutions for that particular problem, which you feel that it will eventually solve the problem. So then you should be having a group of people or committee sort of a structure where these three, four problems can be discussed together. That is called as a brainstorming. And I, I'll tell you, the brainstorming helps immensely because then it, it often said that when my brain stopped working, uh, my brain stopped working, maybe the somebody else's brain start working from that end onwards. So that is the reason when brainstorming happens, when people, many people come together, they will definitely land up with some creative solution for that particular problem. And during that brainstorming process, anything can happen. You can substitute, you can combine, you can adapt, you can modify, you can magnify, eliminate, rearrange, reverse. So anything can be done. You may combine two pro solutions together to solve that problem. So ideation stage, it's a very um, creative stage where you, there are n number of possibilities of, you know, reconstruction. And then at the end, you create a roadmap for your problem to find the solution. So this step is very important. Then when you land up with one or two solutions and you feel that it will definitely work out, the stage comes when you should build a model of that particular solution. Many a time it happens that uh, the solutions are sometimes hypothetical. You feel that it will work out, but when you create a model, it, 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 it don't do the job. So in order to make sure that this problem is solved by particular uh, solution, you should be coming up with the pro prototype. Prototype is nothing but the physical model of your innovation or idea or a solution that you have identified for that particular problem. Suppose I have developed a two prototype or a model for that particular solution uh, problem. And I have to check and test whether it is really working out or not. And for that purpose, you should go and do a testing. So testing is a stage where you give your model to 
the end user or a customer they use that and they what they do they give you a feedback whether it is really working or not and based on their feedback you again work on that feedback and do some changes in your prototype and create another model or a prototype and then give that model again for your customer or end user whether it is working all out or not and this is back and forth process it will it, it will never happen in one go so you have to be ready for it okay so and this process is a multiple time uh, till the time you reach to a desired product so as i mentioned uh, the entire process will be happening back and forth maybe it come to the test stage but then you realize that it is not working out maybe you will again go back to a prototype stage and then if you realize the solution is not the uh, good enough to solve the problem you may go back to ideation stage and at the ideation stage also you will realize that my problem was not well defined so i have to go back to my uh, defined stage to identify a real problem and it may happen at this stage also you feel i need some again feedback from my customer to redefine my problem so this is not a one go process this will keep happening back and forth all the time of your journey of innovation <clears throat> so you you have to be ready with it so i hope uh, you understood the process of design thinking so uh, in order to give you examples how uh, there are few examples i'm trying to give you here uh, are um, some of them are very common uh, solutions to the problem uh, because see for innovation there is no age limit for innovation there is no boundaries so the scope of innovation is really big even if you are from medical sciences background you are nowhere restricted to come up with some solution which is you know uh, observed in your uh, day to day life uh, so i have few examples uh, that i'll show you so these students uh, from daman they have identified a problem with overflowing garbage bins and they come up with a solution where uh, you no know, separate slots for biodegradable and non biodegradable waste can be created with an uh, alarming uh, facility where when the trash bins are full the alarm can be sent to the municipality and they will come and collect the garbage so this is the innovation done by class 9 students then young innovators uh this young innovators has developed the uh, reclaiming machine in the sense many times it ha it happens that uh, you give a wrong print command and you end up losing or wasting your paper so they have developed a device where you can insert this printed paper and they will wash out uh, the ink on that paper and then you can reuse that paper so they are just avoiding the wastage then next so this uh, boy uh, has come up with a stick for his elderly grandfather where it is inbuilt ka uh, step counting uh, thing is there medicine uh, reminder is there locator is there emergency alarm is there fault detector is there and automatic torch is also there how he came up with this idea basically his he faced same problem with his grandfather when he met an accident when nobody was around and that time he realized that problem when elderly person go out for walk or for anything a such a type of device will be very much helpful to understand their family members whether their people are safe or not then there is another innovation done by this small little girl 
where artificially and naturally ripened fruits can be identified with some sort of litmus paper taste. And this will help to identify whether uh, uh, level of naturally occurring sugar in fruit with the help of uh, naturally occurring sugar in a fruit. So this is also a very good innovation. We have seen that the fruits are ripened by carbide and that is not at all good for the health. When you buy any fruits from the market, you should be able to identify whether it is artificially ripened or naturally ripened. So this is also a very good innovation done by class 12 grade students. Another example that I would like to give you because see there is no age, as I mentioned, there is no age limit for the innovation. So uh, Mr. R. K. Chaudhary, who is now at the age of 85, he has come up with some uh, you know, innovative oil, oil, herbal oil. Mm. So what really happened during the COVID time, his daughter was facing a major hair loss. And that time he realized that he should invent something which will save her hair loss. So he come up with that hair oil and he start, uh, when he saw that effect on his daughter, he, they created a bulk of products and started distributing to the their family members, friends. And when they see a substantial uh, results, it becomes so famous. And they started this company, Abime Herbal. And last year, I'll tell you, they have crossed the revenue of 6.5 crore. So at the age of 85, if somebody can come up with an innovation and start his business, I think this is a really good example or a, uh, inspiration for anybody. So this is all about, so what I did is I tried to convince you that innovation has no boundaries. Any person at any age can do innovation. Innovation is not limited to your subject area. And then now we will move towards the innovation in the health sciences. So very recently I've visited the biomedical technology wing of Trivendram, uh, which is at Sri Chitra Trunal Institute for Medical Sciences and Technology. And I would like to give special thanks to uh, Dr. Monoj Komat, sir, he is the head of Biomaterial Sciences Technology. And with his due consent, I'm sharing his innovation with you. Because when I visited his lab, I was so inspired ki how this research is helping to solve the real world problems in health sciences. So they have come up with this bioceramic bone substitute material with a different shape, different porosity, different size, and how it is helping the patients. So I'll explain here one example. See, during uh, surgery, brain surgery, what happens? They drill four holes here, and then they give cut and open the skull. And when the surgery is done, they close this flap. But what happens? The holes that that created creates a hollow you know, uh, space inside and which leads to the cosmetic deformation in the patients. You can see here in this example, this is quite visible, but then they have come up with this type of buttons which can be placed once the surgery is done so that patient will not have any cosmetic deformation. And this is absolutely a wonderful thing that they have done because many times when any individual go through sur brain surgeries, it becomes very challenging for them to come up with this type of cosmetic deformation because particularly for uh, females, it becomes very challenging and they have solved this big problem. So this is one of their achievement. Another is, another one is, if you look at the bone deformation of this small little girl, she had a hard time to move her hand up, down, or backward. 
But then what they have done, the material that they developed, they extracted uh, first the stem cell of this girl and cultured the stem cell uh, with this material. And then they did the surgery. And the end result is you can see that, that the girl is able to move her hand upward, backward, downward, anywhere. And the best thing that they have done is when they were doing the surgery, they actually, uh, next to the operation theater, they have actually developed one lab, cell culture lab, so that the transportation of cell can be easier. So up to that level, up to that extent, they go to solve the problems of the people. So I think it is very commendable and I really appreciate their work and I'm very much thankful they allow me to share their um, innovation with all of you. So after that, I have another very good example to share with you all. This story begins three years ago when graduate students at Stanford University were assigned a class challenge designed an incubator that could save premature newborn babies in India one that would cost less than $200 and help to solve the crisis of infant mortality in the developing world. More babies die here in India than in any other country in the world. In fact, nearly 2 million children under the age of five die in this country every year. Most of them live in poor neighborhoods like this one outside the city of Hyderabad. Most of the babies who die here don't even make it one month. One of the biggest problems they face is simply staying warm. Because these babies are so tiny, they don't have enough fat to regulate their own body temperature. Four million of these babies die every year. The ones who do not die grow up with severe long-term health problems. Because so much of their bodily functions are going towards staying warm that their organs don't develop normally. Jane and her team traveled to India to see for themselves why the babies were dying. They learned that 80% of the tiny infants who need incubators only need them to keep warm. And most of them were in remote villages and in the urban slums, far from hospitals with the $20,000 machines. By the end of the class, we knew we were onto something good. This is the most amazing team. A PhD in electrical engineering, an aerospace engineer, master's in computer science, to have left behind what could have been far more lucrative careers to be saving babies. We knew we had something that was immensely important not only to us as a team, but also to the world. The Stanford students now live in India. They have taken years fine-tuning the design of their cheap portable incubator. Dozens of models tried and rejected until this. It looks like a sleeping bag for newborns, and it can be washed in boiling water. The inside is seamless, so bacteria can't collect. Hello there. This is a two-day. The baby inside is kept warm by a plastic sheet containing paraffin wax. And it's wax and water. That shit probably feels a little bit like the womb. Right? It does. In fact, all the babies we put into this have fallen asleep immediately. The wax is melted using an electric warmer where there's electricity or simply by pouring boiling water on it. The wax is tucked in the bath and will remain at 98 degrees for four hours and then can be reheated. All this for less than $200. Hi, Munchkin. <laughs> there. He's not asleep. The correlation of two years of work, of hard work, of constant prototypes, and finally we have the product that is actually helping uh, you know, a newborn child. And that's, it's unbelievable. After two years on the drawing board, Jane and her team were finally ready to try their portable baby warmer on someone who needed it. Nisha, a five-pound baby girl who was struggling to keep herself warm in a village in Bangalore. The first time I saw a, a baby put in this, I just had chills down my spine. Baby Nisha survived. She just turned five months old. Doctors at the Cradle Hospital in Bangalore have just finished the first round of tests on the Embrace Baby Warmer. A second and final set of trials are about to begin. We're going to meet the highest quality standards. We're not bringing a second wave product to developing countries. What's been the reaction within the medical community to this device? 
It's been incredible. And doctors are literally lining up to place orders for the products. Clinics without incubators will use the baby warmers to move critically ill babies to city hospitals. Mothers of rural villages will use them to keep their underweight newborns warm and alive. So how many babies' lives do you think you can save with this? Over the next five years, we hope to save and help over a billion babies. And most of them will be from villages like this one, where Jane and the Embrace team have refined their baby warmer with the help of the mothers who will eventually use it. Because in these villages, it's an everyday thing, right, that, that babies die. In fact, many villages, you don't even name your baby for the first month of life. Sudatha has lost all three of her newborn children. All were low birth weight babies. All died because they were too small to keep themselves warm. The vision for me is that babies no longer die from being cold. That every rural clinic and every rural healthcare worker is equipped with the Embrace device. Sudatha was shown the newest Embrace baby warmer and soon other women from the village joined in. They, too, had lost children, they said. And within minutes, they were teaching each other how the baby warmer is used. If I had this, Sudatha said, I could have saved my babies. I could have had children. In March, the mass production of Embrace baby warmers will begin. India will be served first, and then There is a huge, huge global need for this, from Uganda, from Haiti, from... Oh, asking, when can we purchase these? Hearing that just made me realize how close we are to, to fulfilling our mission, right? to, to giving mothers a chance to save their children. And that's what drives me. So you're going to change the world starting right with India. I hope so. <laughs>
I also extend my hands towards them. I'm always ready to help out at each stage of innovation to entrepreneurship. And uh, uh, I think, I hope that uh, you all uh, like my uh, lecture and uh, uh, I'll definitely now conclude at this moment and, uh, and open, open for the questions now. Thank you for your nice presentation. We have with this uh, session uh, our university faculties. If they have any credits, I will request to unmute them and ask the questions. Sure, sir. So I will take a moment of uh, pride that Maharashtra Institute of Health Sciences, Rashi, has recently established Disha Incubation Center. And uh, this is the right time. Yesterday also we experienced during the Avishkar, um, it is a research festival being conducted by university. There are more than 100 uh, projects are like that. They can be commercialized as a startups and uh, most of them have started giving the patents and so so uh, this Disha and your guidance, uh, I think we think we are very thankful to you for sharing your contact details. Uh, as this uh, session is being live streaming YouTube and it will be available recorded also. So those students and teachers and research in athletic colleges and teachers definitely they will uh, uh, take help from you. Uh, in this note, uh, now I would like to thank uh, um, the team. Uh, of MHS, I will start uh, acknowledging Deputy General Dr. Madhuri Kanetke, Madam, our Vice Chancellor, Madam, under her guidance and leadership, uh, we are uh, uh, conducting this lecture series. Uh, Dr. Milind Nikhil, sir, our Pro Vice Chancellor, sir, Dr. Rajendra Bangal, sir, for his guidance and uh, motivation for just conducting this lecture series. Uh, most important, our uh, Dean Academist, Dr. Murar Patti, Madam. Then our uh, head of department, Dr. Jair Parsifasar also had taken in interest for organizing these specific lectures. We have uh, our uh, university department set with me, my colleague, Dr. Vaishali Gambire, she is also working hard for this workshop and uh, lecture series. And um, uh, last but uh, I also grateful to the, our technical team of computer department for creating Zoom link and making this uh, YouTube uh, live streaming. So uh, with this, uh, I declare that uh, this session has been in. Thank you once again, Megan. And uh, in thank future, you. we will be in touch for this. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much.